Good evening boys and girls and welcome to another bedtime story review. Today we're going to be looking at The Monster at the End of This Book by John Stone and illustrated by Michael Smolin and featuring everybody's favorite lovable pal, Grover. Um, this is one of those stories that I remember from my childhood. I really enjoy it. I think it's a little bit advanced for my daughter right now, but um, we're going to go ahead and start off by reading it. The Monster at the End of This Book by John Stone, illustrated by Michael Smolin, featuring Jim Henson, Sesame Street Muppets, CTW Books, copyright 1971 by Children's Television Workshop. This is a very dull page. What's on the next page? What did that say on the first page? What did that say? Did that say there will be a monster at the end of this book? It did. Oh, I'm so scared of monsters. I have an idea. If you do not turn any pages, we will never get to the end of this book. And that is good because there is a monster at the end of this book. So please do not turn the page. You turned the page! Maybe you do not understand. You see, turning pages will bring us to the end of this book and there is a monster at the end of this book. But this will stop you from turning pages. See, I am tying the pages together so that you cannot... You turned another page! You do not know what you were doing to me. Now stop turning pages! There! I, Grover, am nailing this page to the next one so that you will not be able to turn it and we will not get any closer to the monster at the end of this book. Alright, alright, alright! Do you know that every time you turn another page, you not only get us closer to the monster at the end of this book, but you make a terrible mess! This will stop you from turning pages. A heavy, thick, solid, strong brick wall. I would just like to see you try to turn this page. Do you know that you are very strong? The next page is the end of this book, and there's a monster at the end of this book. Oh, I am so scared. Please do not turn the page. Please, please, please. Well, look at that. This is the end of the book, and the only one here is me. I, lovable furry old Grover, am the monster at the end of this book. And you were so scared. And I told you and told you there was nothing to be afraid of. Oh, I am so embarrassed. I'm going to tell you a story that my cousin told my mom who tells me. My cousin um, is a teacher in elementary school. And when she was student teaching last year, she um, told my parents that um, some of the kids in her class didn't know how to turn pages because they were so used to using digital devices and they would try to swipe the pages and they would ruin the books in the classroom because they didn't know how to pick up a page and turn it properly. Um, I think this story might just be the solution to that. It's a really good way to teach kids about turning pages. Um, it has like a really cute little premise that uses the physical nature of the book um, in order to bring the reader in as an active participant in the story. Like, you get to be a character, or your little toddler gets to be a character in the story. And I remember loving this when I was little and thinking it was so silly and so funny. You learn how to suspend your disbelief and participate in this, you know, make-believe pretend of being like so strong that you can tear down a brick wall by turning a page. Um, I'm not sure if my 14 month old is at the point where she understands that that's supposed to be what's happening. Um, but I know that soon enough she will be at that point and it's, it's a lot of fun. It's like a little, a little inside joke that um, the little kids can get into and be like, oh yeah, I understand that like 
I, I can't tear down a brick wall and the turning these pages and actually doing it, but then I can also pretend that it is and like I'm powerful and look at that. And also, once you've read through it once, you know, the very first time maybe, maybe you'll be like, oh no, there's a monster, I don't want to turn the page, but you keep turning anyway because turning pages is rewarding, you get more story. Then once you get to the very end for the first time, you know how it ends and that just brings an extra level uh, to the story the next time because now you know that Grover has nothing to be afraid of, even though he's back at the beginning and he doesn't know. I'm not an expert on child development, but I feel like there's something there. <laughs> and I just think this is really cute, and I wanted to tell you guys about it if you hadn't read this story before. Um, I got this copy from the library. My parents, I believe, used to own a copy that we used to read. I don't know if this comes in board book form. I think I mentioned this when the last month's book review which was Rumble in the Jungle, um, that my daughter's still a little bit rough on pages. She's getting better. Uh, like I said, she's 14 months old now, and she's getting better at turning paper pages. But um, again, if there was a board book version, that would also be cool. Um, but in any case, this is, yeah, super cute, and you can't go wrong with Sesame Street characters. Um, it says somewhere on here, in the front of the back, that there's a sequel. Here we go. Another monster at the end of this book, which I haven't read. But if you have, or if you're interested, or whatever, comment below, and maybe I will consider looking that one up and seeing if I can find that one at the library too. But in any case, um, go ahead and check out the playlist of bedtime book reviews that I've been doing once a month. Comment below with your suggestions for what I should cover next month. And don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss my videos twice a week. I post Thursdays and Sundays, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.